Um, we have people. Who can get the, we have people from the public online. Yeah. You better get going. Um, I would move that we adopt the agenda. I second. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, which brings us to uh, approval of the minutes from our eight twenty two meeting. I move the adoption. I second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's also unanimous. This brings us to public forum. Um, nobody from the public forum wants to speak? Nobody in the room? We're earlier today. We are earlier. Yeah. We're throwing them off. <laughs> well, we also don't have anything too terribly contentious on our agenda, hopefully. Um, so I guess we'll open and close public forum, which brings us to our deliberative agenda. And the first item of our deliberative agenda is to get um, some information um, on the South Burlington Solar Ordinance that was um, that they um, adopted earlier this year. Uh, Andrew Chelnick and uh, Bill Ward from uh, from our permitting inspections are here to engage us in a discussion on this. So I've been trading uh, email with Andrew and I asked him about um, the, the specifics around this ordinance and he had pointed me to the, um, is it the land development requirements? Is that our, our LDRs? LDRs, uh, regulations. Sort of, yeah. sort of. Essentially. And there's a, yeah, there's a section there. That... And, and then what I did is I printed off the, what I, what I, the pages referenced by Andrew and, uh, and, um, and sort of, they're part of the agenda now that, and I think I also included them in emails to you all. Um, so I don't know if you want to yeah, sure. start off and just tell us about it, and then we can ask some questions. Before I start, let me just thank you guys, because we've been slavishly, or trying to slavishly copy a lot of the stuff that you guys put in place, like the renewable NG ordinance, and we're trying to do leaf blower, so other stuff that you guys have put in place. So thank you so much, and I'm very, very um, grateful to be able to return the favor to, to some extent. So I think this is, I think this is really, really good. Um, in terms of the sole ordinance, it was kind of a two-step process for us and kind of two parts. So one part is already contained in the Vermont commercial energy standards. There's an appendix that municipalities can choose to adopt and it's a solar ready requirement for commercial buildings. Um, you may know that for residential buildings, you, if you adopt a stretch code, solar ready is already, already part of that. Um, so this kind of fills in that, that gap. So, so if you adopt that appendix to the commercial energy standards, then all your buildings, all new buildings are required to be solar ready. And the neat thing about that, um, commercial solar ready appendix is it does a lot of work. It's a very thoughtful appendix and it deals with a lot of the issues that you might think about in enacting a solar PV ordinance. So it addresses, you know, do you have enough sunshine? Is the building oriented correctly? Is there, you know, a roof garden? Like all the different things that you would think about. Do they already have a renewable energy system on site? They don't need the solar. It does, it does a lot of work in a few words um, and when and if you adopt that, it makes it a lot easier than to have, you know, few words to actually then require a PV. So, as I said, we do this in two steps. We first adopted that solar ready ordinance. And then once that was in place, and you could do this at the same time, but we moved a little slowly. Once that's in place and new buildings are required to have that solar ready zone, we then basically added that, you know, now you got to fill that zone up. Um, and we had an exemption for systems that are too small and you can kind of pick and choose your number, but it was like, you know, came out to roughly like 10 panels, you know, less than 10 panels will wave you through. And we also then set a limit. You don't have to put more on your building than you, than you think you're going to consume, than electricity you think you're going to consume. We had some other exemptions, like if you couldn't interconnect to the local utility, you guys probably wouldn't have that issue, but um, you know, some other things. Um, 
and, and that was really it. It was pretty, it was pretty simple, you know. Um, again, because the, the commercial solar ready standards did a lot of the work already, um, and we didn't have to write that, we just had to adopt it. And honestly, we didn't really get pushback. Um, you know, we put it out for public hearing, we didn't get pushback on the solar ready when we put that in place, we didn't get pushback on the on the PV when we put it in place, and people people seem to be happy with it. I will say that in prep, we did talk to um, folks about you know PV requirements, and the residential builders were not happy to have a PV requirement. The commercial builders were were fine. They said, you know what, we recognize solar is really cheap. It's probably cheaper than we can buy from the utility, and you know we don't mind a little little kick. And like they they were fine with it. They didn't they didn't have any issues. So that's that's kind of where we came out. Two things. Um, Do you have numbers in terms of the um, buildings that have now been built that have? Uh, well, let's see. It just came in place in the spring, so nothing would have been built yet. Um, and honestly, I mean, I, I've not. We we probably should do that. I've not been in touch with our DRV, like what's 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 come through at this point, you know. But I don't think we'll see the fruits of it for a couple of years, right? Um, and you were saying that the residential is already part of the uh, the state building code. Well, I, has Burlington adopted the stretch code? Is the stretch no, energy standards? No, we have adopted the the fire and building. Code. Uh, well, so okay, so South Burlington adopted the stretch energy code for the residential. And if 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 Burlington has it, honestly, I would urge you to do that. And at and, least not in the building code. Okay, I mean that's, that's like a really, really key important um thing because it requires lots of different stuff. It requires really good weatherization for new residential buildings. It, it, it ups the ante on what's required for EV, it ups the ante on what's required for soul. Like it really hits a lot of points. It does a lot of work for you, you know, as a municipality. So yeah. that those those stretch standards for residential already require soul already. Is that a state standard? It's a state standard, but again, just like the commercial um, soul already appendix, municipalities can choose to adopt that more stringent code. It's it's really important. I mean, I think it's like, honestly, like foundational. Um, the, the, I mean, just to maybe just to fill in some other blanks, not necessarily relevant to the commercial energy standard, but like what we also did um, to have kind of increase the viability of residential solar, is in our LDRs require alignment of streets, building lots of buildings to reasonably maximize solar radiance. So now you've got like new homes basically have to be aligned to catch the sun. They have to already have a solar ready zone. And like we felt that at that point, we didn't have to mandate then new residential homeowners to actually put the solar on. Like if everything is kind of set up and greased for homeowners to do that, and most people, I would expect, would do that because they'll realize it's cheaper. And the folks that, even having done that, are intransigent and wouldn't do it are the folks who would scream the loudest having to be required to do it. And it just, it kind of felt to us like, we'll get most of what we need residential by what we already have in place. My, my quick look at the zoning ordinance does not find a um, anything that would uh, cover it in the, uh, the the performance standards I, I or I didn't see anything in the special use standards as well so, Can I ask a question directly? Sure. I'm just wondering, if you, if you, are you aware of this, this stretch standards? I I mentioned the topic. We had a trades meeting today, and I, I think our team would be happy to come back and answer specific questions. 
two building inspectors, and two electrical inspectors who would be involved in the uh, code uh, deciphering of what is required and what you know each building uh, would be needed. Commercial-wise, they felt we're already doing that. They were meeting the, the CV standard that was mentioned, so it's not to be an issue with the commercial properties. And they felt that most new residential construction already meets the standard that would, um, under the building code, the Vermont Division of Fire Safety meets the uh, conditions to make it sold ready. So I think it really would probably come down to some of the finer points of that Vermont uh, life safety code, which uh, in South Burlington would probably be regulated by Terry Francis. And I'm not sure if maybe Terry has either signed on or had input on the changes. What is that, Terry? Well, the, I mean, just the, the, so South Burlington adopted the structure energy standards in 2017. So it's been, it's been in place for a while. Um, and as I said, my, my understanding is it kind of hits a lot of different points. Um, for buildings that I think are quite important. We don't um, regulate, but we don't complete. We don't have any compliance around that. We don't inspect whether builders um, do it. The state mandates that, I mean, and this has been a lot of discussion statewide, the state mandates that builders complete a form that's provided to the first homeowner where the builder has to check the boxes that are required to demonstrate that they've built the building to uh, the level required by the stretch standard. Um, now they could cheat and lie, I guess, but like my perspective is if someone's actually filling out the form and actually checks a box that says, yes, you know, we've done this type of insulation and yes, we've done two by sixes and yes, we've, you know, weatherized the basement, like, if they check that box, they've probably done it, you know, but maybe not. But but in any event, um, my perspective is you're e even if people are going to maybe cut corners and cheat, you're probably getting more than you would have had you not adopted that standard. So, you know, so I actually think that we should do a follow up where we ask our people, uh, and that would be Bill's people. But also Megan Tuttle and the uh, the city attorney's office to give us a report regarding whether the state stretch code for um, it's commercial it's just residential just residential, residential right. energy stretch code the residential energy stretch code and the commercial solar ready appendix um, are part of our. Um, regulatory system and we need to do both the building and electrical but also the zoning because where they have it is as part of you know so for new development you've got to have a, build, a, a zoning permit and that's where you get it up front so it's a little different than people who are like modifying and going to like put in a solar array because they want to South Burlington is saying, you got to, you, you build buildings at this level, you got to put solar in, which I strongly support us. Yeah, we key to the permit. So, so yeah, so I would just love to, to get, you know, an, a, an analysis by all those three entities in terms of it and, you know, in terms of its apl current applicability and then its advisability and you know potential problems. So if people think that there are um, you know there's a bad idea because it's going to disincent certain things. So let's get that on the table. I'd rather hear it here before you know to do that. And Bill is so kind and waving his hand. He's not waving. <laughs> I just want to say that in addition to that, I can. From 2021, I can pull the when we went to the new open gov permitting system, we should be able to produce some numbers for you on the we are collecting those forms and we are doing the compliance to see if we have Ted Miles who does it on the zoning side. And our building folks do the, the two building officials confirm that they've met the 
CDEs. Um, Ted is collecting and actually helping people fill out the residential uh, forms, the RBES forms. So that is a checkoff in our permit. So we should be able to give you some numbers on those yeah. EVs and, and But again, there's a different, I think the, the, the stretch has a more requirements on that form. Yeah, having just filled out or had my builder, because it's the builders that are supposed to fill it out, um, uh, you know, it, it covers the entire building construction permitting system. So certain things are not necessarily um, uh, going to be, um, are not going to be required there, but it would be sort of helpful to see if there are in the, the solar construction world what numbers exist with there and you know, how, how they're filled out absolutely we sat you know for an upcoming meeting long as not next week right out of state next week no we need for next week yeah. um no i think that's a good idea i'm also curious to see, to see what we've come up i don't know these codes that where the overlaps and we're probably doing it anyways because i'm i'm almost certain that we're doing a bunch of stuff already we're not requiring solar on the residential but around weatherization and some of these other things i think that would probably yeah we're probably hitting a lot of some some of the stretch codes more inclusive than just for solar right oh yeah that's right so so yeah it'd be it, I'm, I'm curious about that as well and um one of the questions i had did you do you know of other communities in chittenden county that have done this is it or so in terms of commercial solar um I was able to find Border Town, Massachusetts, and um, State of California. <laughs> and who? State of California. Um, and I, I think that's it. Okay. Um, at least when 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 I last checked. Border Town, Massachusetts. Interesting. Um, so yeah, it was uh, sparser than um, than I would have hoped. Right. Yeah. And then in terms of the um, residential. Again, I mean, I know we weren't here to talk about that, and we haven't, we didn't do residential PV for the reasons I articulated that kind of felt it was things were already in place for folks. But there, there is, there are, I mean, California, I know, uh, I think Miami, there, there were a bunch of places that require solar PV. Um, so, but again, I think if you adopt the stretch code, you're solar ready, and you get, you know, you make sure that all the buildings and lots of things are aligned, kind of. Kind of got what you need on the residential side. If this was possible to get back for our um, October meeting, I, I I know that we we have a lot of things. Yeah, we have, in, we in have some other but... things, and I know that we'll have um, one item around the vehicle for higher taxi stuff coming back to us. Um, but it's I'm trying to coordinate this behind the scenes, but essentially, I think this will be coming back to us. It'll be referred to us by the council. Um, and, and I will, but it didn't, wouldn't have to be at the October meeting. But perhaps we could do we could do both, depending on what other uh, staff items come to us in October. But certainly, at a at a at a meeting very soon. I mean, I'm thinking just in terms of assuming that there is or there are ordinances. To propose ordinance changes, proposed. You know, we could do that work and then put it in, but then the process is just a little, it's sort of out of our hands because the ordinance can be right. So um, there, it, I can conceive of if we if this makes sense and we vetted it of us adopting something in this term, which I would love to, to be able to uh, have done. Um, well, certainly we can request that um, the uh, city attorney planning and uh, permitting inspection do this work um, and uh, see if they can fit it in and get it done in a timeline that um, would get us something to review and um, deliberate on next week, next two meeting. Um, but, uh, and then we just have to see what, what the feedback we get on that request. Yeah, right, that, that, that's fair. I don't think we need to move anything, do we? <clears throat> we, we could. I see a consensus. I'd like, I, if the minutes can reflect that there, that everybody's nodding, then I think we, we're okay. Okay. Let the meet, let the minutes show that we have, we'd like that to happen. Um, 
Okay. Cool. Right. Well, awesome. Thank you for having me. Um, Thanks for coming. Yeah, I love this collaboration. And I'm really, I think it's really cool. Um, and uh, love to see what else we can kind of get done together. Yeah. Now. I'd love to follow you, Andrew. So yeah. <laughs> you know, keep it up. Plagiarism is the highest form of flattery. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. Good night. See you. Um, thank you, Bill. Yeah, thanks, Bill. Bill, you're welcome to stay. Gonna grab Andrew on the way out here. Um, so that brings us to our next item 4.2 the proposed uh, North Mooski Ave feedback survey language. The news. Ready up for that? So, uh, Corey, do you want me to yeah. open that? Yeah, sure. Um, so we had understood from the uh, tubes that you wanted to see a draft survey before it went out. Uh, as you know, the implementation of the repaving and the lane adjustments have been made along the corridor. Um, we've put together a draft survey. It's short and sweet for your consideration. Uh, the thought was to get this out in October. It's been a couple of months after the changes have been made, so people have had a chance to settle into them. Uh, and uh, I think the important thing is we've been uh, listening and uh, still engaged in the corridor. I met with the Dolans, uh, I think, last week to discuss loading zone concerns. Uh, you know, the council had approved the extra $15,000 for the community health center to do the additional geotech design work uh for their off-street parking uh, perusal so with that happy to get your feedback uh on the survey so that we can finalize it and send it out corey anything you want to add no that's okay I, I hesitate to take our time to micro manage this i i think that there's some changes that need to be done um the uh uh, for example, uh, well, first of all, you asked possible demographic example uh, questions. I do think that there needs to be those. And I think that there is a real distinction between the people who are living on the street and the people who are off the street. And so the um, questions three and four um, don't really recognize that. And you're going to get you know, if somebody's on the street, how often do you use North Minuski Avenue? It doesn't, I don't, I don't think that it gets us enough information. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's different when you, when you're talking about people who are living on Decatur or living on Crombie, we also, you know, uh, et cetera. And I'm particularly focused on the, uh, the area that we've changed the, uh, the parking. Um, I, I also think that like on number four, where you talk about how do you travel most often? I mean, I, 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 I sort of would like to understand the full range that people are, are traveling on North Winooski Avenue. So here we're asking them to pick one, but people use it in three ways, you know, Generally speaking, even if you park your car, you're still walking around a corner. Say you're going to go to the market. Say you're going to go to uh, the restaurant there on that, that corner or go to the food shelf. Uh, maybe you ride your bicycle there and park it and then you walk. So, I mean, I, I, I think that, you know, trying to understand uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the travel is um, uh, is important. And... The, the number five question where it talks about the primary destination, I, I also think that it is it would be more helpful for us to understand the the demographics, um, the, the demographic distinctions between the people who are living on the street and the people who are living off the street. A front porch forum um, conversation a week ago or so. Uh, had um, a plea for people to improve their parking, that people were taking too much space. And this was a person who was, you know, um, trying to get into her into her house and trying to also use the, the parking spaces 
like on the street there. And it was a it was an interesting conversation. Um, so our ability to sort of parse that out would be really helpful. Um, there, I said I didn't want to quit pitching, but here I am marching through all of them. I'm so sorry. Uh, I don't know that the question on just asking, does, does it enhance safety for all road users? It's much safer. I, I, I don't, I know what you're sort of getting at. I can appreciate that. Um, somehow, I don't think it's an effective public comment question or is it meant to elicit um, what, um, what we're looking for in terms of safety. Um, I don't have a question in the top of my head. Um, uh, and perhaps the more, it, 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 it's sort of the, the same when you say, does it make it more functional? I mean, is it for it functional for who, functional for what? I mean, and there are distinctions between the two. I really love riding up the east side of the street on my bicycle without competing, without going into the lane. Um, I don't do it all that often just because of where I live and the best way for me to, to ride. But um, it, it, you know, so you know, that question sort of doesn't get to the, um, to the distinctions there. So I, th 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 those are the substantive points. I, I totally appreciate you coming back here. I totally appreciate uh, you you've taking this effort. And I, Great. We can work through those comments, I think, um, just if I may. Yeah. Um, I think the key uh, demographics uh, we could add, I'm wondering if we added to number two, clarity of a homeowner on North Winooski Avenue or adjacent homeowner, you know, or, you know, renter on North Winooski Avenue adjacent. So the whole concept would be number two gives you the data of where someone lives and then can filter all the other questions by number two. If you also want gender and age or income demographics, let us know. We thought where you lived was a demographic that was important to kind of cut the data by, but we didn't know how far you wanted to go into demographics. I think it's really important to understand ages. I think it's important um, to understand uh, race, you know, gender, yeah, I think so in terms of safety. Um, even so, I, I would encourage that. It, it helps us when we're thinking about um, other need, other transportation needs. There are how we we get to fill them. Okay. What other inputs? I think that all sounds good to me. I mean, you're the issue just because you're hearing from folks that are in these neighborhoods every day. So I think whatever changes you think should happen, I would echo just because you're seeing it on your front porch forum. Yeah, I'm and, not, and, I'm tra well. and I'm traveling. Yeah, you're, you're like, in the neighborhood. So. I'm not. So, but I do think that expanding the demographic questions will be huge. Um, I, I, I appreciated these. Um, I was thinking there was another sort of category of use that wasn't um, mentioned in five, and that's like access to services that are along the corridor, mm -hmm. which isn't really traveling through our shop. It's not. It's sort of not captured, and I know that there yeah. are service providers along that corridor. Um, Thank you. And yeah, the, I missed that. the other the other thing is, as I read it, it sort of skirts around like sort of the point of this whole thing. I think it's really good and we have to go about it this way, but I'd like to be more direct about asking people about impacts, both positive and negative. You know, I'm a cyclist. It's made this, this my commute safer, or I go to Fohong and there's nowhere to park now. You know, it's, or maybe it, just to get that sort of, um, to, to elicit that um, in a way other than to have, give a place like you do a number 10, for additional feedback, um, and so to be more, just ask something more about the the, Im the impacts that you've experienced as, as a result of the change, good yeah. or bad. Yeah, because okay. I think there's probably there's a there's probably a bit of both. Yeah. <clears throat> um, 
Um, I think that's all, with, in addition to what, you know, what some of what you said that I would offer. But I appreciate you doing this and um, I appreciate your yeah. continued effort to try to um, to make these changes less impactful. Right. We worked hard to try to make this neutral. Um, so I know we didn't want to have the perception that we were leading people. So we tried to use terminology and rankings in ways that were more kind of impartial. Yeah. But to your to your point, Mark, for asking about impacts, uh, good or bad, do you see that being a long form uh, question or is it somehow a multiple choice? I'm trying to think, you know, what kind of information you're seeking to get out of that question. Well, there, there's other places where we ask people for short answer here. Mm -hmm. Um, so it could be that, or it could be at the end too. Yeah, and it may be using long form, but I'm just right. I, can't, I can't figure right. out how to make it a short question because right. you probably it probably drives down response rate too. We just have some people to build the right stuff, yeah. or you get people that are, you know, that are, you know, have have strong responses instead of those that have more neutral ones. I don't know, and maybe the words impact and positive and negative might not be. No, I'm not mm -hmm. a survey uh, creator, um, but I, I just think we need to get at that straight out that a little bit better. And there may be a different approach that you guys can offer. Can you work on that? Anything else? No, at the end of the day, I think we want enough information to know that if there are particular problems that we can assist in the fixes on, then, uh, you know, that would be good, you know, and do we need more bike racks, right? If you look, you know, and, and I don't know how, you know, I, I, I'm just thinking and just in terms of the way that we do that, you know, I mean, I, I go up to Despacito, I, I, I put my bike up, I, Get often against a, a street sign, right? There are no bike racks over there. There is a meager one all the way on the backside of Ginsdale's parking lot, you know, and like on the other side of the building. It was like, that's useless unless you're going in that door. So, um, right. Some way of us being able to 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 get at are the the changes that we've made. How the, how are we doing? What other ones could we could we need? I don't. Yeah. Great. Thanks. So I guess the question would be: uh, Should we? My thought is staff. And thanks, Corey and Philip, for working on the survey uh, with me. Uh, do you want to see where we've landed and then via email and then any final kind of thoughts you could get us via email and then we ship it out or are we waiting till the next month? I don't want to wait till next month. Okay. Um, you know, um, so I'd be happy with seeing um, an email and giving me a, a time to like add any final thought or to, yeah, to give give my my input. Yeah. If I don't make make a sort of a deadline, give me enough time and not too much. And if I fail, then you go run and I just lay myself completely to it. Great. Yeah, I'm good with that too. We don't want to slow it down too yeah. much. So let's we'll see if we can do it via email without having an open meeting. Uh, just give feedback and uh, yeah, and see how that goes. Yeah. So our plan would probably be sending it to you all individually, and giving individual feedback. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Moving right along, at light speed this afternoon. <laughs> The risk oh, I know. <laughs> I just did. It yeah. did. did. <laughs> um, 4.3 is a uh, railroad enterprise project update. Good quarter of my side. Sit here. Grab this space. 
Yeah. Should want me to get this one. That'd be promoted for sure. So, yeah, just here to give a quick update on the Rail Yard Enterprise Project. So we've provided this previously, but we just periodically want to come in and do this while the project is moving as we continue to hit milestones. So a little background again, <clears throat> just again, the project area, obviously kind of over there in the south of downtown area. So, and then the three alternatives, the Rail Yard Enterprise Project that originally came out of the Pell study, uh, and supplemental Pell are sitting here with the 1B, the 2, and the 5B. And the 1B is the one in which we had previously presented and discussed and had gone to council and speak, spoken about uh, getting that concurrence with a selection of that as the preferred alternative, which is where we are currently with the EA uh, SMILT process. Environmental assessment. Environmental assessment. Thank you. Yeah. And so currently, where that stands is that the draft EA or the environmental assessment and the 4F sections uh, documents have um, been compiled and they've been submitted for initial review and they're right now open for public comment period. And these documents are located both hard copies at uh, the CT office at the city hall, as well as here at 645 Pine. Uh, there are hard copies available for people to view as well as uh, more conveniently, they're located on the project website, as well as uh, uh, ability to uh, comment through the website as well, submit comments. So we're uh, in this comment period um, until October 9th. And so, you know, this is uh, another one of the, we've sent out communications through a project website, uh, as well as uh, through the, uh, our, Consultant has always put on a uh, mailer for just kind of again uh, soliciting input and comments on the EA 4F documents. So, kind of from that point where we sit right now with the project is that uh, it's anticipated that kind of in mid October, the 4F submittal to the Federal Highway, which will include any received public comments and uh, responses to those comments, will be submitted. And then in mid-December, we'd look to get the final EA submitted, um, submittal to VTRANS at Federal Highway, uh, following those uh, additional uh, comments and responses. And then from that, we would look to get a mid-January, we'll be getting a uh, final 4F submittal to Federal Highway. And in between each one of these steps, there's a, a few rounds of review with federal and state partners that have to go through each submittal. And so that's just kind of the time gap in this. And then we look to uh, finally get the Federal Highway issuance of a decision in late January of 24. <laughs> and with that, uh, that would allow us to kind of continue with the progress of the project and move more into formal design work in late January. <laughs> so uh, we previously submitted uh, and shared the South End project sequencing plan um, that had kind of been occurring for uh, the, a lot of the work in the South End over the years since 21. Obviously, you know, now that we are a couple of years further along, there have been, you know, some projects have completed already, and we have other updates um, as far as ongoing projects that we have, as well as some new projects that are currently listed on this. The city is working on updating the South End sequencing plan just to be more accurate to the current status of all these projects, as well as including the projects that weren't previously identified um, on the earlier versions. And so kind of a quick uh, summation of this right now. Um, Chico, do you want to do that? Or you uh, uh, I'm happy to do that. Um, I think what we're seeing is that 
some projects are shifting and adjusting, and we also have the addition of the new projects such as uh, Great Street, Cherry Street, and Bank Street, where grants were secured. So the plan is to update this sequence for South End and downtown, and that we would come back to you uh, with kind of an updated version here. <clears throat> I think it's fair to say that the work uh, in the permitting phase here to get uh, the approval through the federal permitting process has taken us longer than we would like on the REP. Uh, and uh, we are also finding that the Champlain Parkway construction is moving at or better than what we expected. We're going to be looking at Great Streets Main Street, which bids just came in uh, last week and trying to reconcile all these pieces and bring forward uh, an updated document to you soon. So I actually have some few more points to add. Okay. So just for council members understanding, once we complete the EA, then it opens us the opportunity to begin design, to preliminary design and to, into uh, hopefully construction. Um, there was another point I was trying to make, and that is, oh, so, one of the things that the council members will see in the near term is uh, you're currently pursuing a phase two of design with Stantec, which uh, develops, it's a scope that allows them to proceed with some of the design work early than late. One of the part pieces of that puzzle is to get survey done this fall versus waiting till spring, which uh, enables us to continue on our schedule fairly promptly. Uh, otherwise, if we move that space a significant delay, we certainly don't want to do that. So council members should know and prepare for the thought that uh, our consultants assembling uh, a scope and a fee. And uh, once we have that in place, then we'll go to council looking, seeking your, your authorization authority to execute. But uh, that work needs to happen. That survey work needs to happen this fall in order to keep, keep pace. So that's an important element to managing the project no. and that was the point i forgot to mention that is the aspect of that though is that this is done with a little bit of risk in that we are trying to be proactive with the assumption that federal highway is going to concur with our decision so you know in order to as long as i keep things going on a good schedule we want to feel pretty confident as a project team that this is the right direction for the project to go and so there's no it. indications that your assumptions assumptions are wrong correct so that's yeah. where we're we're moving forward on so that norm said will be coming again and uh in the near term yeah so one more point in this public public engagement of the ea environmental assessment is we've also worked more directly with the uh, properties that are directly affected by the abutters so that they're aware of where we are with this project beyond just broadly broadcasting to the public we're reaching out to them specifically sharing with them the, the draft ea or comment so, and then just another point is that uh, individuals who are looking to provide feedback on the EA or 4F, like I said, the project website has the availability to submit comments there. Also, if uh, individuals are so inclined, they can also email them to me directly, and I'll get them to the project team uh, for filing and for uh, records. And then just uh, as the project team works through the comments, the responses are not immediately sent to those who have sent the comments in. We compile all those wrap responses and then provide those responses back at the end of the at the end of the uh, time period. So I uh, just would say that just in case someone said, oh, I didn't get a response back to my comments, it, it's part of the process. So is that clear when you uh, are is that clear on the documents when they're I don't think it is, thinking back to it, I might not be clear if it's online. I haven't looked at the online simple process, but when I've received emails, I've typically tried to respond back to indicating that, you know, we've received this and we will be responding in kind to all responses at the end of the period. Okay. I, mean, I think as long as people know what the expectations are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Well, I don't know if anybody has any questions or... Um, um, I just have the one question around um, what well, you said we have to do the survey this fall. The risk is that if 
if the federal highway doesn't um, concur with us, then we could have spent money on the survey that we could, that money is essentially, I just want to make sure. Yeah, I so so uh, in conversation with our state, pro state project manager, he's of the belief that it's prudent for us to do that and would be project eligible. So I don't think there's any financial risk. Okay. I think it's just, we don't want to be wasteful in order to be state, federal, or local resource. But we also want to be reasonably thoughtful about how it affects schedule and affects the general public. Obviously, we want to have this advance as reasonably quickly as possible, but prudently. Okay, that, 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 that helps. Um, and then you think you'll be coming to the council in October or early? Uh, I don't know if we will, because we will get the documents for the next phase, but then there'll be some discussion back and forth prior to us having the final documents to bring to council. It'd be, I would say, probably November, probably November okay. is more it's realistic. Probably November. For our availability, availability. Because we definitely want to get a fuller snowball. So. Yeah, like to his point, like getting surveys critical. It's going be snowing in November, according to the farmers' arm of all of it. Let's hope not, but it will work hard to stay on schedule. You know what I think about snow. So. <laughs> um, so I think I read that opponents to the Champlain Parkway who are um, Supporting the REP have, uh, you know, have ex continued to express that. Is that is that accurate? And um, you know, in terms of the prior um, opponents to, to the Parkway, um, have is there any indication that they would not be supporting this? I have not heard anything direct that would indicate anyone opposing. Uh, the progress of the REP. I I recall one individual name names that he his belief was that it was supportive of it and just to execute as planned. As in like do it as quickly as you right. so prudently. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we are so yeah. So I, that that was uh, and, and in terms of the property owners, um, is there any indication that? there will be roadblocks thrown up? Uh, I don't think that can really be known until the full determination of impacts and the right-of-way phase is gone and, and those conversations have been You know, the, at any point, someone can change their mind about how they feel about something. So I don't want to speak out of turn and say mm -hmm. that everyone's on board with everything. Uh, we'll just simply say that we are in clear communication and continued communication with all the property owners and are you know trying to be as prudent with providing any information that we have available that we can provide at this point to them upon request. Okay, which is no red flags. flags. Better, better be as better. transparent as we can. Yeah. Sure. But and and you're not. I mean, it would be helpful for us to hear if there were red flags or even yellow flags you know, that are out there. Well, the, some of the property owners who are being the most impacted uh, do have their concerns, yeah. and yeah. they have voiced their concerns and. Some of them have voiced their concerns many times, and we are hearing it. But again, as this process is, you know, federal process, we are proceeding through. We are meeting with them at the appropriate time that we're able to, and you know, giving them the information of what the next steps are. And when we get to the right of way phase, and we're able to actually have those communications, to start doing assessments uh, on property and property valuations. Then you know, you can have those more detailed conversations that they are wanting now that we are unable to do because of the process. But you're at so, least hearing about where they're at and having a sense for it's what degree, Yes, yeah, degrees yes. of concern, but it's without any specificity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just kind of quietly kind of accepting where they're at. But uh, I think there's also an expression for the need and desire to be, to have a path forward and not have kind of a muddied decision-making that's not moving forward. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. It's just to, to my, Way of thinking: the more you can understand where people are at and what they're looking for, mm -hmm. the better you're prepared to deal with it in whatever way you you can. You can. So I think the biggest challenge will probably be parking for and how they how various parcels will either share it as a common resource or work to their own individual interests on their own parcel and how that plays out. so creative.
yeah. thinking about we're trying to how we deal with that. High levels of cooperation, but it's really kind of up to them how they want to approach that. Now they want to make use of their property in the future. <clears throat> but I think there's some seen opportunity with improved access and improved solar water. So. Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the update. It's exciting. It remains an exciting project. Oh, yeah. Hey, sure. um, next on our that is a potential executive session. Um, and do we have language on a motion? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And do we need to do that? Do you want to provide some update that, that for the public before we make such a motion? Um, I I think the public update that we've provided to the Board of Finance is uh, as much as we have. I'm happy to do that again, but maybe so for the listening public, just uh, just something brief so people know whatever you can share that we're talking about with the public before we go talk about it. Do you want to do that? So just what was shared at the Board of Finance. Uh, just where we are generally okay. outside of anything we discuss yep. in executive session. Yes. Yeah, so last week uh, we went to Board of Finance and City Council requesting a one-year extension to the second MOU with Chippen Saw Waste District in the City of Burlington around 195 201 Flint Avenue. Um, the request was granted uh, by Council. Um, yeah. So CSWD is going to consider that at their meeting, which is this tonight. Wednesday. No, tomorrow night. Wednesday with the full board at 6 p.m. tomorrow. And so this is about overall trying to achieve two main goals. One, having a modern drop-off center, Chittens Always drop-off center in Burlington. And two, having uh, a united and better uh, structured soil management facility for the city of Burlington. And by uh, having access to uh, 195 201 Flynn Avenue, the thought is that that could be an effective soil storage area and management area for the city, as well as a potential future site for the drop off center, should it no longer be able to be accommodated at 339 Pine Street. Whether that's because of the Rail Yard Enterprise Project, which we just discussed, or any other adaptive reuse of that property that makes a you know, solid waste drop-off center, not the optimal use of that property. And so this executive session, it relates to uh, to negotiations, contract negotiations? Correct. Uh, is there the MOU that's currently uh, approved expires at the end of September in four days. And we are negotiating with them uh, certain uh, terms under either a lease arrangement or a purchase and sale of 195-201. And uh, staff would like to share the elements of those negotiations. And since it's a real estate transaction, uh, it is uh, an unallowable reason to go into an executive session. You're looking for uh, to get the guy to do in those negotiations. In negotiations. Okay. So... I, Anna has I have one. there you go. <laughs> Very good. Um, I would move to enter executive session pursuant to one VSA. Right. A director's report. Turn it over to yeah. Chapin for that. Um, I will uh, help keep the meeting on track. I'm happy to answer any questions under uh, council item. I, I, and if, if you indulge me, I guess the one item on the uh, north plant sewer uh site on break is that we uh are reviewing bids that came in for repairing the pipe in the river so that we can abandon the surficial bypass uh the existing above ground bypass before winter so that we're not trying to operate that through freezing conditions um, we are reviewing the bids i'm confident that we'll be in front of you on the council in probably the late October meeting for approval for that construction contract. FEMA is indicating that that work, uh, in addition to the bypass work that was done initially, will all be eligible at 
75, 25, and of that state pays a portion of the 25. So our likely share is gonna be around 12% of all of this work. So uh, we'll keep you posted, but that's the update on the site of break. I have two questions about that. One is, um, did you identify the nature of the break? I know that there was some question of whether or not it was near the shore or further out into the yeah. river. <clears throat> the divers were able to get down. Uh, they were unable to see because the river still was cloudy at the time, but they were able to feel their way. And the pipe had been undermined on the outside of the curve. There's a large oxbow at North Plant. And the outside, due to the flooding, had become eroded, and the pipe was no longer suspend was suspended. It was no longer supported, and um, the pipe uh, separated at that location by the bend in the river, the outside bend. So we are evaluating a repair of that section, and understanding that that is not going to be the permanent, long term repair that we are going to be then evaluating with FEMA some hazard mitigation funding or something to do either a uh, land oriented force main that goes around the river or directionally drill underneath the river as was done in 2006, the last time there was this sewer main break. And the other question was around the, um, oh, because of the, it was because of the flooding and the erosive effects of the flooding. There's also been discussion around um, the undermining of the bike bridge. I don't know if it's unrelated to the plant, but it's yeah. that whole area still. And is there any update on, on that? Parks is uh, in active communication with us. Uh, we are taking the lead on the storm event filing and work with FEMA. Uh, but Parks knows the window in which they need to determine whether that damage to the abutment was storm related. And, and whether there is structural damage there, they were waiting for the water level to go down as well to expose um, the uh, more of the abutment. So Parks has to do that work and then work collaboratively with DPW. Correct. Okay, well that's, that's new information and I'll definitely follow up on that. Okay. And Derek Roach is their point person now that Cindy's out on this. Cindy is out? Just for a couple of weeks. Okay. A week on vacation, one week at a conference. Thanks for that update. Um, just I don't have questions. I have but I'm sorry. Um, would you like to do your notes during council items? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's nothing else on director, so we'll move to council items. Um, on Thursday, third floor city hall, seven p.m. or over Zoom. The Ward 8 NPA will be discussing the McNeil plant. So I just want to join the discussion. You can meet us there. Exciting. And BED will be doing a presentation during that. Just want to okay. Okay. No, I think I need to like gather up all the items that I through your way and so, and so I can figure out where things are at. We're, we're picking through them slowly, I would say. One, one and we're, you know. We can put them all into a hat and start to you know, get that a, way. It's a, possi it, 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 that's a possibility once I go to the list ahead of time. Some, some of those items I know that um, in our agenda planning that Chapin and I and Maddie have been doing, we know that there are some that are coming and there's sort of time yep. on things, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so is DPW involved with the, at all, with the bird bikes? November, right? You're gonna... Is, is that when they're coming? Well, we are involved, we are signatory. We have a agreement with CATMA. CATMA is the one who has a contract with bird bikes, but we are a partner in that agreement. So the thought was to come to you around November with what the performance data for the year has been. We, the contract terms that CAPMA has with BIRD is that they can cancel with 90 days notice before the renewal period. The renewal date is in June. So the 90 days ends sometime in March. 
the thought was if we started a conversation with you all in advance of March, well in advance of March, then you all could give us any guidance on whether any modifications to the contract need to be negotiated between Kappa and Bernie. I would love to get something in writing through Katma, you know, maybe through through you, yeah. to, from Katma, related to how it is why people leave their bikes in the middle of the sidewalk. Everywhere. 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 Yeah. Everywhere. I, I, you know, like, is this that the bike dies and they just, okay, this is a thing is heavy. The dead new speed. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, I, you, I, you know, because if you pick them up, then the alarm sounds. In okay. words, so, yeah. so, so, so this is this is and this is a a, a question. I, a I mean, I this, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, I think people. I mean, people comment on it. It's, it's weird. It, yeah, I can get around them, but it's you know, it yeah. But I have out. concerns when you know if they're still using them during the winter and they abandon them on the sidewalk and then it snows and then our sidewalk oh, just come through. Yeah, and we just we're so I think that not waiting. Through. Not waiting for that, that it, you know, um, the other metrics, the uses, and, you know, et cetera, the, those are things that could probably wait. But that's the one operational issue, which um, both other people and myself kind of are interested in. Yeah, you think about some of those not able body try to get by, so they got a narrow sidewalk. Walk around Ward 8 any day. Like, I have had so many, and I know this isn't the discussion now, but so many property owners and renters that have called me that, like, after a night out, they'll come back. And even in the parking lot that my apartment building's in, there'll be, like, six bird bikes in the middle of the parking lot. And so then no one can use their cars. And then people are late to work. No one knows how to move them. And it's just... Like all up College Street, all down Bradley Street, like it is just absolute chaos in so, the neighborhoods. So, yeah, I mean, you think about somebody say on a motorized scooter because they can't walk, right? They're not, yeah, walking on, you know, they're not driving them on this. I mean, on the, on the grass. So, yeah, I think we need to need to express. I, I mean, I would love us to express dislike of that um, in addition to getting the reasons before us and and, and some and asking Katma and Bird to like come up with some ways that this won't happen because the current way don't work. So could we is that something we could do be, do before November since it's in an, an emergent sort of situation sure. around could ask Katma to come in October. Yeah. Maybe we maybe just we, just done just on still like, just the yeah. process that piece of it. and then I'm still interested in the usage. It seems like yeah, there's a lot more usage now that there's not like the hub system where that we had when the previous right. um, like model. So that's encouraging. It's just like how to get them, how to keep them out of the way when they're not. Yeah, well, yeah. this relates to TDM and the operation of transportation demand management. And so that's why you've got CATMA to do this, right? Because it's just part and parcel of that. So, all right, we have, we've got an idea. It's not working perfect, not working even really good, at least on this area. Just make some changes so that this thing works. Okay, um, I guess I will update my update then is I'm just copying Hannah's update, but the, the Ward 47 NPA is doing, um, they're having the McNeil event tomorrow night. Uh, so that's it's seven o'clock at the Miller Center on Wednesday, the 27th, I think. Is yeah. um, and we'll have a, uh, on our agenda is the um, a McNeil discussion. BD and others will be there to talk about pros and cons of <laughs> energy. Yeah. Um, and that's my update. So if there's no other council items, um, 
talk about our next meeting uh, currently scheduled for uh, October 24th at the regular time, five o'clock. Can we have this room then? Yep. Um, does that work for everybody? Yep. One second, please. That would be the fourth. Uh, that does not work for me. If, uh, if that would make my wife, that would make my wife unhappy. I do that all the time. So I make a habit of it. <laughs> I, I make a habit of it. I know it sounds happen. like you've got an opportunity to make more of a habit. Of it. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, would the seventeenth work? That's three weeks, right? That's the third. That'd be the third. Yeah. Tuesday, I don't know if we could have the room then if that works for staff. This room isn't available, but um, on Thursday, the 26th, two days after the regular schedule, it does work with that. I didn't check staff calendars, but I at least checked it. I can also. My NPA is almost always on the last Thursday. What time is that? Seven. Uh, normally seven. Right. So we could maybe. If we kept it to. I just am the only counselor that goes to it. So if I don't go, then they don't have okay. anyone. Well, we don't really yeah. keep you from that. But that would, could that have set 27th work? I, I have something that I can make. I can the do so that I took so, it. Yes. So the, 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 the 26th, uh, I have um pack the fourth Wednesday of every. Well, oh, no, the Wednesday is the 25th. So 26th, yeah. the 26th, then. So Thursday. Right. Yeah. I can make that work. So, um, what time at, at five? The room is available all day. I can book the room so we have it and then confirm with you guys after the fact because I, I haven't checked all the staff's calendars. I'm sure that it'll work. But... Yeah, five o'clock. I think it would give me more time to coordinate yeah. like yeah. some of these things is better than pulling it in. I, 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 I agree. I'm sorry for complications. No. So, oh, Wendy, that uh, we're doing it for her. I will do that. I, I, I expect to get some cred out of it. <laughs> <laughs> we get the soil pile out of the inner valve and we're good to go. That's I mean, the no, that won't get you any wrong. That's the end of our agenda. Three counselors have to get down to PCA on Church Street for some study. Yeah. So, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. That we adjourn. Since Gene's busy on Sunday. Yes, I, yes I I'm just locking it in. Are those account. in favor of uh, adjournment? Uh, I, uh, all right. And, uh, <laughs> 607. Okay. Thank nice. You. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thank you all. Let's get through the revised survey and uh, good luck for the next Nothing meeting. gets me more heated than the bird bites. That's been my recording. Stop. It, it is interesting. You know, I feel like some.